，对唔住啊，爹哋妈咪，对唔住，我嘥晒你哋多年对我嘅教育，传俾我嘅理财知识，我搞唔掂屋企嘅财政，要交俾我嘅西人老公啊！比完你嘅生活費之後，你仲有少少錢剩嘅話，點樣可以將我哋嚿錢增長 ？Be fearful when everyone's greedy and be greedy when everyone's fearful. We're going through a time at the moment where some people are struggling. They might be fearful because they see a lot of volatility in the financial markets. It's going up and down. But this is the time to be greedy. 大家，我哋而家面臨緊一個危機。Soaring energy, food, and petrol prices have forced many to choose between heating. And eating, the cost of living crisis has, for some, become too much to bear. All over the news for the past two years, the UK is in a cost of living crisis. So, our today's topic is how to live in a more and more costly economy and how to save money. So, having lived here for over a year now, we're really assessing and analysing how much we're spending on things like food, clothing. Energy, really, just trying to come up with some ways to save money and crunch the money as much as we can, so that we're in a good position financially. Which is kind of like a house tour. Which is kind of like a 首先，大家要知道英國最近嘅 inflation 最勁嘅其中一樣嘢咧，就係電費。要識登制呢啲嘢，大家都知道啦。但有一樣嘢，我從來都唔係好留意到，直至到而家咧，就係呢一啲 mains 洗衣機、抽油煙機啊！大家唔好笑啊！我以前真係覺得撳個掣就會著，冇諗過原來係有個 main 嘅掣係可以刪咗佢嘅。但係因為原來咧，你一直喺後面開住嘅時候咧，電費係照樣唔係話你呢度刪咗就冇咗，所以呢樣嘢大家真係要記。唔好似我以前咁，你哋估唔估到你屋企边一样电子产品系最用电嘅？答案就系 kettle。以前我喺香港慣咗，如果飲水一定要煲過先，啲水咧就煲到上底。但係喺英國咧，因為你越煲咧多水電費就越貴，所以要慳錢咧，你應該飲幾多先煲幾多。當然有啲電掣你係唔可以熄噶啦，例如雪櫃，千祈唔好熄。如果唔係你入邊啲嘢咧就會變壞。唔好話啱甜唔提你。咁下 part Lawrence 就會同大家解釋，因為我都唔係好熟悉，同埋俾個機會大家聽到啲英文。Okay, so one of the most important appliances in the entire The entire house is definitely the boiler, but it can also be one of the most expensive. So I'm in charge of that one. And the best thing you can do with your boiler, you need to make sure that you have it on a timer. So we actually have the boiler timed to come on three times a day: once about half an hour before we wake up, once in the afternoon, and then once at night time as well. And just keeping that heat in the house, because if you leave your boiler running the whole day, you're going to have a massive bill racking up. One new thing we're going to try as well. Well, is we're having someone come to hopefully install a smart reader so that we can use our electricity even more efficiently than we have been doing. You also need to be really conscious of your washing machine. Now ours is a washer and dryer, so probably wouldn't need a dryer in Hong Kong, but here we definitely do. What we've tried to do to cut some costs is to research when is the best time to have your washer and dryer on, and apparently it's between the hours of 11 p.m. and 8 a.m. So that's when we do all our washing and drying. 大家可能留意到我哋今條片係好暗，因為睇下上面啲燈係冇開到嘅。Save where you can. 好黑啊！ Another good thing is to educate your kids as well. So Noah is going to show you some of the things that he helps to do. 理財慳錢呢啲嘢一定要教小朋友。係，大家好。我需要俾你一個貼士。點慳錢？而家電費好貴啊嘛。乾柴柴嘅時候唔開燈啦。啲衫唔好，著完一次就洗，好嘥電噶。Hey guys， 俾你喺邊啊？<笑>嚟睇下，好凍嘅話咧，我要用 The Fire。呢個係我冬天最中意嘅位。Next up is food, and since last year alone, food inflation has gone up 10%. So what we want to do is look at the price of a basket of essential food items. And what people used to say is you could judge inflation by increase in the price of milk. Actually, milk hasn't gone up that much. Have a guess what you think is the most inflated food? It's a fruit. Apple. Uh, no, not apple. The yellow one. Apple. Bananas. Gone up 23% in one year. Oh my god! Yeah. Think I. I guess because they're tropical and you have to export them. Eggs have gone up 18%. Vegetables, broccoli.
broccoli have gone up over 10%, cheese over 10%. All of these very standard food items are just empty in people's wallets now. Yeah, even water is up 11% as well. Prices have gone up again. Seven pounds, seven pound fifty, now eight pounds. With food, I guess the important thing is to make sure you're not wasting any of it. I think we are very have this idea of we are happy, 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 we costs a little bit and be a bit creative and even a bit romantic is to eat by candlelight so for Gladys and I in particular and even if we have people around we might just have try and keep the electricity off so the money very dim lights on and have mainly candlelight to save a few costs as well. So in this economic situation, we need to use some creative ways to spend money. For example, every two weeks, we will check out which phone company has a cheapest plan. So these things are very clear. I, since the college was born in the English teacher, because my parents didn't have a birthday celebration like this. I was like, my mother, what a good friend. My mother, 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 我九月開始已經在想減價或者買禮物先放在櫃子裡做人望長遠一點有計劃一點其實是會慳得很多的 crisis you really do need to be careful with your spending and your money but also what you need to be thinking about is how are you managing your finances for the future too if you're lucky enough to be able to save in these times and maybe invest how do you do that? Yeah, so we're going to be having a visit from the Godfather with some financial tips for everyone. Here he is. Hello. Welcome, welcome. Nice to see you, the Godfather and the cousin. Yeah. Keep it in the family. Thank you so much for joining us today on this very important topic. We are going to learn some very important tips. Yeah, so this is my Uncle Dom, a very well respected financial advisor. So I'm hoping we can all tap into some tips today. Thank you very much, Lawrence. Mm. Thank you, Gladys. Mm. Yeah. I feel like that was a very BBC moment. So we prepared for some questions. Uncle Dom, can you tell us about your role in the financial world? I've been in the industry now as a financial financial advisor for 33 years. I work for major insurance companies, two major banks, Lloyds, TSB and Barclays. And 20 years ago, I made the decision to go and work for myself, which is probably the best decision I've ever made. For 20 years now, I've been advising private clients and corporate clients on how to achieve their goals. I would advise clients clients to prioritise the necessities. Make sure your mortgage is paid, make sure your rent's paid, pay all your bills on time and put food on the table. And once you've actually done that, create a budget for yourself so you know how much income you've got coming in, how much expenditure you've got and prioritise those necessities. And if there's any money left over, first thing you should do is try and build up an emergency fund. Let's say six months worth of necessities. Keep it in an easy access account. Then once you've done that, look at saving for the future. Look at things, you know, 10 years from now, life events, your children's graduation or deposit for a house or a car. Save little, save often, save a long time. So question three, as a financial advisor, have you noticed any impact in your particular industry? Yes, for sure. I think people now are more focused. They are budgeting. They are looking at interest rates where they can actually put money now that's going to create a bit more income for themselves. If you put a bit of money away somewhere because interest rates are higher, it's allowing them then to justify staying at the gym because they're paying, let's say, £100 a month for that 
that gym, they might be getting that in interest. Now, with the current economic situation, if you have a little bit of money in your life, you have a little bit of money, do you have any tips to give us how to get money or how to get money to get money to get money? I would say the world's greatest investor, Warren Buffett, once said, be fearful when everyone's greedy and be greedy when everyone's fearful. And what he means by that is, we're going through a time at the moment where some people are struggling and they might be fearful because they see a lot of volatility in the financial markets. It's going up and down, but this is the time to be greedy. So if you do have any spare money, you're lucky enough to have that, save it. Save it for the long term. By the long term, I mean anything over 10 years. Take more risks because with pound cost averaging, as markets are going up and down, you can afford to take more risks because your money's going in 12 times a year. You're not just investing a lump sum. Take more risks than you would normally do. You'll reap the rewards in the end. Wow, I'll come today. It sounds very simple, but sometimes you need to be told. I think. Then we're going to the last question. Which time is the best time to invest? The best time to invest is 10 years ago, and by that I mean today. You're asking me that question, and if you leave here today and you waited and waited and waited, and you look back 10 years, you would say. I wish I'd done it then. I think we all have a lot of money to save this idea. As a child, my parents would teach me. But sometimes, as a big person, there are a lot of people who go to the street and there are a lot of people who go to the street. So I think you can learn this thing. Whether you are a very good person or you are like me, or you just want to learn to learn your own future. I think it's very worth it. Where do you think the money is going to be? How do you think the money is going to be? How do you think the money is going to be? How do you think the money is going to be? So yeah, hopefully you found that information and those tips useful just want to say it's not all doom and gloom yes the crisis is still ongoing fortunately we had good news this week in the UK the inflation rate is the lowest it has been for two years so things are moving in the right direction what that doesn't mean though unfortunately is that people's spending power is getting any better at the moment it just means price increases are slowing down not going the other way so we still need to be really diligent with our money so you guys are like me, like a jumping jumper or bowler. Um, obviously, this video is very focused on living in England. If you are living in another country, you can leave it in the comments. Do you have any other places where you live? Do you have any other tips to help you live in your life? We can help you with your help. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching again and uh, see you next time. Uh, What's a Cantonese finance phrase you can get him to say? Hand the money! Huh? Hand the money! Handy silo. Handy silo.